coming for it. Can't nothing stop me. I got some things I gotta do. Hey, hey, hey. I'm making a move. Study long, study long. Ain't nothing gonna happen on its own. I'm making a move. Don't need no hickey for this song. I got joy all through my soul. I'm making a move. Get up, get out. Mr. Sun is shining on me. I'm We are in Bend, Oregon. We shot straight down from Mount Hood, which is a two-ish hour drive to the city of Bend. Originally a logging town, but now is the gateway to basically every outdoor sport you can imagine. We stayed at McKay Crossing Campground, which is about 39 minutes from Bend. So I'm gonna start with all the Bend stuff first. We rented tubes from Tumalo Creek. It was very hot out because again, we're under the Pacific Northwest heat dome. Float lasts two-ish hours or longer if you can't figure out how to float down the river and not get stuck. Halfway through the float, you get to Bend Whitewater Park, which is where the Class 2 rapids are. They have a section where you can just step out of the water and skip the rapids altogether if you feel like it, but don't skip the rapids. It's literally the best part. After the float trip, we dried off, changed clothes, and quickly made our way to Wanderlust Tours for our 8 p.m. canoeing trip. We stopped after paddling for an hour-ish and had some hot chocolate, local beers, and dessert while stargazing. When we headed back, it was completely dark, so we had to switch our headlamps to like a red light, which we did not know was a thing, but it's so helpful because then you don't blind each other. The next day we were in town doing some laundry because by this point it was day eight on our trip and we were needing some fresh, clean clothes. My mom texted telling us to go to Blockbuster and I was like, mom, it's closed. And she threw down with a link and said, they're open, call them. And she was right. We're at Blockbuster. Oh my gosh, so cool. Oh my gosh, it's like, uh, remember we're just spending so much time in a Vlogbuster? After picking up some much needed merch and wishing we had a DVD player to rent DVDs for, we said our goodbyes to Blockbuster. Campground facts time. First off, there are closer campgrounds than where we stayed. But the reason why we didn't stay at those was there was no reservations available, especially because ours fell over the weekend. We stayed at McKay Crossing Campground, spot number three for four nights, and it turned out to be a hidden gem, a dry camping, gem, but a hidden gem nonetheless. Oh. 
There's a creek right nearby which runs from Paulina Lake down Paulina Falls and right through the campground. The only downside of McKay Crossing is this awful road. I wouldn't say that's the only downside. What is the other downside? Well, vault toilet. What makes this campground a gem? I'm gonna tell you. Number one, Peter Skeen Ogden Trail. Two miles into the hike, you get to the first waterfall. So we knew there was a way that you could jump into the water. We just didn't know how to do it without killing ourselves. And as luck would have it, there was a mountain biking group called Paulina Plunge that was coming by right when we were there. And their guide showed them how to jump in safely. So after they left, we just did what they did. This is one of the higher degree of difficulty dives in the contest. Oh my goodness, wow. That was beautiful. You can see her form in the air is so graceful. The judges will definitely like that entry, Kyle. She's just put on a really great show for us. Climbing up. There's also a double waterfall just above this one if you hike for five more minutes. Go before noon. Go before noon, 100%. Because now the trail is like really getting busy. So my last minute canoe trip is paying off even more. One of the women on the trip actually told us about these natural water slides that are on the Peter Ogden Trail. We had no clue that that was a thing. So we read a blog post that told us that there was two water slides. We locked out again because the Paulina Plunge Tour as we were walking back to our campground, went to one of the natural water slides. So we got to see how to do it again safely. What are they doing? Whoa. two reason why this is a hidden gem the lava river cave it's only 20 minutes from our campground and the self-guided tours run from 9 a.m to 4 p.m counting every second till the sun goes down heartbeats buzz into the neon sound whoa Walking through is called a lava tube. During the final stages of an eruption, there isn't enough magma inside the lava butte. So a small stream of lava finds a path to flow in an established channel. The stream flows steady, which allows the crust to build from each side of the channel, while the lava hardens as it makes contact with the air, just like how moving water starts to freeze over in the winter. So this is all lava yeah. that just like hardened. Yeah. 
Wow. We went to the Lava Lands Visitor Center after that and walked the trail of the Molten Land, which is a one mile loop across the basalt lava flow. You get to the source of the lava flow when you reach the base of Lava Butte. We went to the Lava Cast Forest next. When we got there, literally no one else was there. Probably because we went in the afternoon and it was 102 degrees. 6,000 years ago, hot lava came into contact with these trees. When the lava eventually cooled, it created this protective covering or mold around them. The trees then burnt out completely, leaving a hollow interior and gives us the lava cast forest. We didn't love it. It was interesting. This was not worth it. Yeah. To me. I would come here, see one cast, and leave. What are we doing? We were doing the gas station tour. Why? Um, we were finishing the cast forest drive and then the tire pressure light came on. So we went to a shell close by and tried to do the air pressure. Three of the tires are good. One, we like basically took the air out of because their tire pressure, air pressure thing wasn't working. So then we went to this other one that this really nice guy who's teaching us about stuff told us to go to Gordy's. They don't have one. Went to Chevron, they don't have one. Went to this Shell, McDonald's, they don't have one. So we're trying another Shell. Trying to go to Le Schwab. Trying to go to Le Schwab, they're closed because it's Sunday. We don't know if there's anything stuck in it. We're gonna look at it, but like, we're just trying to get air and I'm trying to not have a flat tire. We're doing it. Beautiful sound. Beautiful sound. Number three. Our campground is very close to Paulina Lake, East Lake, and Paulina Falls. And we only made it to Paulina Falls because of the whole tire ordeal, but it was totally worth it to at least go to Paulina Falls. Number four, the final reason why this campground is a hidden gem is because it's near Sun River Resort, which we only discovered on day three. It's a super cute residential and resort community with lots of shops, rentals, and restaurants. But it feels like just keep running in place. Okay, we are packed up and we are heading to Crater Lake. going right to the water slide when we were walking to our campground. Wow. That guy's having a great time. I'm like sweating so bad. Getting old. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Originally a logging town, but now is the gateway to basically every or outdoor sport you can imagine. Every outdoor sport you can imagine. Outdoor. Oh my God. Okay. I really, really hope you can see this. 